The question today, who are you? That's a simple question. I think you ask any person on the street, and you'll probably get a different answer from just about everybody you ask. Um, who are you now in the spiritual context? Uh, the popular answer today is I'm a soul having a human experience, which is relatively true. It's valid. Kind of gets you off the hook because you don't have to go much farther. You just accept that as the truth. And that's it, bud. Well, I want to take it a little farther today. I believe we are something different than that. And here's the way I look at it. You are you and the unique person that you are as a collection of all of your experiences that you've had that you recall from early years up until now. You're a combination of all the things you learned, you were taught, that you believe, that you feel you know, the desires you have, the preferences, the opinions you have, the energy that your body has at any given moment in time, the moods that you have, um, the, your intentions. I mean, you're really a lot of things. You're a composite of intellectual ideas, maybe some not so intellectual, maybe some dumb ideas thrown in there, um, impulses for sure, compulsions. But what does it all add up to? I think what it adds up to is we're a collection not just of our thoughts or our feelings, but of our memories. You get down to the rudimentary basic level, we are our memories, aren't we? If we don't have memories, then who are we? Classic example, people with dementia, Alzheimer's patients. I have a few peers right now that have Alzheimer's. They don't remember very much. And anything they do take in to their mind, their consciousness, they forget right away. So then they become a blank slate, literally. They're still a physical human being. They're flesh and blood. They have nerves, muscles, tissue, all that. Atoms, molecules. But without your memory, you're not very much, are you? I don't think any of us are. And let's look at it this way. Scientists, if you believe scientists, and I guess there is still science to be believed, Scientists tell us that at any given point in our life, our total memory recall of our life to this point is about 1% of our life. We remember roughly 1% with some relative degree of accuracy. Now, scientists also, psychologists that is, point out that about half of what we remember is inaccurate, largely inaccurate sometimes. We tend to embellish our lives and remember things in a whole new way that generally makes us look better, sound better, feel better about ourselves. So our memories are not precisely accurate, certainly not like your, your smartphone or your computer when you bring up some data that was stored in there a long time ago. The memory in that computer, unless it's defective or the software is defective, it's generally pretty precise. You know, you ask it something, a question that it has stored in the memory, and it usually will retrieve it exactly the right way every time. But that's not true of our memory. So now we're basing this 1% of our life that we remember, that's about half right, and that's the combination and culmination of who we are. Because without all that memory to draw on, to formulate our beliefs and our opinions or sustain them at any rate, to have attitudes and desires and opinions and all of that, we have to rely on our memories, right? And that's why the Alzheimer patients just, uh, you know, they, they can't really do much for themselves. They can't even remember how to brush their teeth or wipe their butt, how to chew sometimes. I mean, you have to reteach them all the time because they don't have any memory. So we're kind of useless as a human being, as an organism, if we don't have memory. That's, that's true for animals too. Animals rely on their memory, same as we do in that respect. That they have to remember things that they've learned to continue to kind of evolve, as it were, or to progress and to survive. 
survival. You depend greatly on your memory to survive. If you can't remember how to light a match, start a fire, uh, put on a coat, you know, you don't remember these things. See, we, we, we learn from our experience in life making mistakes, right? I mean, the old thing of making mistakes is not a bad thing to make a mistake. If you learn from it, it's a good thing. Trial and error. That's how we've learned almost everything throughout history. It's how the scientific method works. Trial and error. Experiment. Failures. Edison failed like, what, 10,000 times trying to create his first light bulb? And so on it goes. The human experience is based on memory. Remembering what we did before that was wrong so we can correct it. Memories are so vital in our life, and that's why I think it's even more important today to be remembering and recalling our dreams. Because when we're in the dream state, we may be traveling to a multiverse and trying out things where the rules are a little different. Obviously, they're different in the dream world, dream state. We can fly and things like that. All kinds of things are bizarro world, upside down and different. And we can bring back uh, the experience we had in the dream and then look at it and shape it in a more symbolic way because this is our emotional brain that's dreaming, really. They're dreaming in an emotional state. Whether you feel emotional in the dream or not, generally you probably don't, but sometimes you might, especially in a nightmare or a really you know wet dream. You might feel emotional, some good emotions. And I believe if we analyze our dreams from that perspective of emotion, that we can draw upon those memories and apply them to our life. But... Just as important, you know, as Socrates, I believe, famously said, an unexamined life ain't worth living, brother, sister. Ain't worth living. And I don't think that literally means you got to go choke yourself and hang yourself or anything. But, you know, your life's probably not going to add up, nobody's will, to much value if you don't examine it once in a while and reflect with some uh, perspective on the memories that you have in your life. The, the recollection of your experiences. That doesn't mean you want to dwell in the past. I don't, I'm not saying that. And it doesn't do us a whole lot of good to look forward and project into the future the woulda, coulda, shoulda possibilities or what might happen, what will happen, what we think will happen. Manifestation, that kind of thing, visualization to the future, even use an intuition to have psychic connections with potential futures. Dreams may foretell futures. I mean, I'm all into that. But all I'm saying is we got to live here now, right now, drawing our memory, drawing upon our memories, I should say, as the basis to continue to reinvent ourselves every minute. Because I don't think any of us, I think hopefully most of us don't want to just rest on our laurels and be satisfied with who we are right now. I mean, there's the old saying of who do you want to compete with? Just look in the mirror, compete with that person. That's the best way to go about it. Try to be a better version of ourselves every day. So I'm going to end on that note and say, I hope you all will take a moment to think about it and share any opinions, ideas, comments you want in the little space below. And I appreciate it. And we'll be talking to you soon. And as G.I. Gurdjieff passed on to Mr. Ospensky, and he famously told us, one of the most important things we can do in the day is to remember ourself. Remember ourself. Have self-awareness of our experience in this moment, right here, right now. Remember that.